Welcome to a lesson on propositional logic and truth tables. A proposition is simply a statement. Propositional logic studies the ways statements can interact with each other. It is important to remember that propositional logic does not really care about the context of the statements. For example, in terms of propositional logic, if the moon is made of cheese, then basketballs are round, or if spiders have eight legs, then Sam walks with a limp, are exactly the same. They are both implications, which are statements in the form of if P then Q. Here's a question about playing the game Monopoly. If you get more doubles than any other player, you will lose, or if you lose, then you must have bought the most properties. True or false? We will answer this question and won't need to know anything about Monopoly. Instead, we will look at the logical form of the statement. We need to decide when the statement if P then Q or if Q then R is true. For this to be true, either if P then Q must be true or if Q then R must be true or both. Those are true if either P is false or Q is true in the first case and Q is false or R is true in the second case. So it gets complicated. Remember, the only way an implication in the form of if P then Q is false is for P to be true and Q to be false. This is where truth tables enter. The idea is this. On each row, we list a possible combination of T's and F's for true and false for each of the sentential variables and then mark down whether the statement in question is true or false in that case. We do this for every possible combination of T's and F's then we can clearly see in which cases the statement is true or false. For complicated statements, we will first fill in the values for each part of the statement as a way of breaking up our task into smaller, more manageable pieces. Since the truth value of a statement is completely determined by the truth values of its parts and how they are connected, all we really need to know is the truth tables for each of the logical connectives. And here they are. To begin, notice the first two columns of all the truth tables are the same, they list all the possible combinations of T's and F's for P and Q. We have true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. First, we have the truth table for P and Q. P and Q is true. P and Q is true when P is true and Q is true. Otherwise, P and Q is false. Next, we have the truth table for P or Q. P or Q is false only when P is false and Q is false. Otherwise, P or Q is true. Next, we have the truth table for if P then Q. If P then Q is false only when P is true and Q is false, which we see here in the second row. Otherwise, if P then Q is true. And on the far right, we have the truth table for P if and only if Q. P if and only if Q is true when P is Q and Q is true, or when P is false and Q is false. Otherwise, P if and only if Q is false. It's extremely important that we have a good understanding of these four truth tables. In addition, here's a truth table for the negation of P or not P. Not P or the negation of P is false when P is true, and the negation of P or not P is true when P is false. And now let's make a truth table for the statement the negation of P or Q, or we can say not P or Q. Again, the first two columns list all the possible combinations of T's and F's for P and Q. And now let's complete the column for not P. Not P is false when P is true, and not P is true when P is false. To fill in the final column, we look only at the column for Q and the column for not P and we use the rule for disjunction or or. The only way not P or Q can be false is if not P is false and Q is false. Notice in the second row, not P is false and Q is false, and therefore in the second row, not P or Q is false. Everywhere else, not P or Q is true. Here's the complete truth table for not P or Q. And now let's go back to the Monopoly question. Let's analyze the statement, if you get more doubles than any other player you will lose, or if you lose, you must have bought the most properties using truth tables. Represent the statement in symbols as if P then Q or if Q then R, where P is the statement you get more doubles than any other player, 
Q is a statement you will lose, and R is a statement you must have bought the most properties. The truth table needs to contain A rows in order to account for every possible combination of truth or falsity among the three statements. Notice the possible combinations of truth or falsity are true, 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 false, true, false, true, true, false, 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 true, true, false, true, false, 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 true, and false, false, false. If P then Q is false only when P is true and Q is false, notice that occurs in row three and row four, everywhere else if P then Q is true. If Q then R is false only when Q is true and R is false, notice Q is true and R is false in row two and row six, everywhere else if Q then R is true. The last column is determined by the values in the previous two columns and the definition of disjunction or or. If P then Q or if Q then R is false only when both if P then Q is false and if Q then R is false. Looking at the eight rows though, none of the rows have false for if P then Q and for if Q then R which means each row of if P then Q or if Q then R is true. Which indicates the monopoly statement is always true. The statement about monopoly is an example of a tautology, a statement which is true on the basis of its logic form alone. Tautologies are always true, but they don't tell us much about the world. No knowledge about monopoly was required to determine that the statement was true. I hope you found this helpful.